Okay, guys. <laughs> you fix this? Okay. Okay, guys. Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to have an amazing lecture because today, two gigantic words are going to collide into each other. So the subject that we study so far, which is called electro, going to combine with the word magnetism to be one subject. So when this phenomena happen first, so this happened at 1820. What happened at this time? So at this time, specific time, somebody came to lecture to explain about compasses. Compasses tell everybody where is the north, the magnetic field of Earth, right? So here on the table, you can see that I have many compasses. Okay, and they're pointing and say, dude, the north is there and the east is there but here in the middle you see here I have some cable with what current I that's what you see here and then the lecturer just by a mistake open the current and what did he saw huh sorry south I meant south thank you south everybody brain like a okay i meant south north and south and then he opened the current what is so happening it's play with the magnetic field so electric field which you we have in the wire which make charge move and then produce current actually produce a magnetic field in this direction let me help you with the lines so the magnetic fields happen to be in that way stronger than the magnetic field of Earth, okay? It's take over that effect, okay? So this thing is called the first hand rule, right hand rule. Remember that we learned the second one previously? We said that this was the velocity or the current. This was the direction of the magnetic field. And the force is actually in your palm. When you give slap, this is the force, right? So this is a new rule. And this rule is actually going like that the thumb and the fingers. So the thumb show what is the direction of the current and the finger, the curl of the finger, show us what is the direction of the magnetic field. So in which direction the current is going in that manner? Taking my right hand, I follow the lines, the red lines of the magnetic field. I say, oh, the current going that way. And what's gonna happen if I gonna change the current? I didn't change the current, I just stop it. So we again back to earth position, but now I'm changing the current. What's going to, go, going to be like? So right now the current is going through the wire to this direction, right? Now it's this and going that way, right? So now the direction is the opposite to the one showing on the board. And this concept is really, really, said really, important. Okay, like we had in electricity, this concept that plus that the same charge repel each other and the opposite charge attract each other, this is the concept in magnetic. Okay, when you have current, you use the right hand rule. Okay, good, we understand this concept, perfect. So now we're gonna st what? Why is the couple connected to the wire stuff? Why is which one? The one is next to the wire. Ah, this one? You just sometimes... This one? No. What? The bottom. The one is... This? Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> it was just stuck mechanically. Yeah, but now it's okay. So I'm gonna close this and close that. It's really high current, okay? Cool. So today we're gonna have a really unique show. We're gonna actually have a real show so you are now, who is your favorite uh, uh, artist, musical artist? Right now there was Maroon 5 here in Israel, right? So let's talk about Maroon 5 show. So you next to the stage of Maroon 5. So this is, I don't remember the name of the singer. Ad, ah, right. Adam Levine, which is a really Israeli name. <laughs> Right, Adam Levine, 
and he's standing on an infinite, infinite stage. What do I mean by say infinite? There's no such thing like infinite. I mean that one of the dimension is really small compared to the other. That's what I mean, right? So the thickness of the stage gonna be D, but the stage is infinite in the other direction. This is gonna be the X direction. This is gonna be from, from the middle of the stage. This is gonna be the Y direction, and this is gonna be the Z direction, right? And what do we have under the stage? A lot of cables and wires and currents, right? So I'm gonna draw also the currents. So we have currents that go through the stage in this direction. They are really strong as far as you go here. So the function for the current in the stage is J, and I allow to write J right now, which is a more mature way to talk about current, is the current density, right? Instead of talking about I, which is not, which is not vector. Here we have a constant. Here we have Z square, which means the top one are stronger. We have here there. So the top one are stronger than the lower one. That was say Z uh, square. But what else do I miss here? Direction. Direction, exactly. J is a vector in the Y direction. Good, really, really good. So the first question, and what we actually gonna do today is to find ways to find the magnetic field. And we have two ways to do it. And that's what we're gonna talk today, okay? What two ways that we had in an electric field? Do you remember? We had two ways. If we didn't have a symmetry and life was fucked up, what do we use? Coulomb's law, right? Small d, q, each one produce electric field and we're gonna sum them all and then we're gonna find the total effect, right? And if we had symmetry, wonderful, we have a symmetry, we understand already what is the direction of the, magnetic, of the electric field, what are we gonna use? Gauss's law, which is at the beginning was really hard, but then we understand how to live with that and how it can benefit us, right? So the same concept is going to happen in this class. We're going to have two ways parallel to the magnetic one, okay? Good. So the first question that I have is question 1a is what is the direction? What is the direction, direction of the magnetic field? What a direction of it. So we're gonna take this drawing and make it more simpler, not 3D, like just 2D, okay? This is the stage. And right now I'm gonna take the current. This is gonna be the axis. This is gonna be the Z. And yes, this is gonna be the Z. This is gonna be the X, Z, and where the Y direction? Poke your eye, right? Go outside of the board. And where's the direction of J? Yeah, toward you also. Good. So I just gonna pick only two wires and I wanna to, it's not actually a wire but one of the J's, okay? And note it. What is the direction of the magnetic field only produced by this one? What is the direction? X, Y, Z. It's a mess. Somebody in the audience do that and that's what I want you to do. It's gonna point that way and gonna say, I know that in this specific circle, only this gonna produce this magnetic field. How do I know it? Using the right hand rule, right? Okay, so I'm gonna use symmetry here. Let's talk about the one, not this one, but the one on the other side, okay? Let's do it in orange, okay? This one. So it's red actually, yeah? So what is the direction of this magnetic field? Nice, nice. Now you understand what I need to do. So this direction is actually that way, right? So that, that, that. And I want to talk about two interesting points. This point and this point. When two which are at the same distance actually looks the same. What's going to happen in this point? The magnetic field say, hey, I'm in this direction, which means you can decompose it to these two direction, and what do we have here? We have at this direction, and I can decompose it 
to the axis. What you're going to have on the red one? You're going to have this one, right? And you can decompose it to these two. Hey, is this a little bit familiar to you? What's happened to these two? They cancel each other and here the same thing. This is the magnetic field, I can decompose it to these two directions. This cancel out. And this is true for this couple, 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 to each two couples of J. You see it? Each J is going to produce this effect. So in general, we can say this. All the magnetic fields above the axis, right, on top, going to be in which direction? The X to the left, exactly. And below, what is going to be? Negative x. So you know the direction. If we had, if we knew the direction, I'm going to this board. If you knew the direction in an electric field, what you, you would do, you know the symmetry, use which law in electric field, not magnetic. We remember we talked, we have Coulomb's law and we have Gauss's law. So if this was electrical question, right, topic, topic, yes, uh, let's say uh, electrism, E, in symmetry, symmetry, right, so we're going to use Gauss's law. What Gauss's law said? He said, take the integral, the area integral, right, it's area that actually Encompass what? Volume. It captures volume. But this is the integral of the A's, right? And this equal to something. Okay, we're going to talk about it. So we have the same idea here in magnetism, in symmetry. Okay, so we also have here symmetry, right? So we have a tool to use today that you're going to learn so far. And this is, I think, the two most important rules in the class these two, okay? So why do I care about the magnetic field on top of the stage? Somebody saw the link that I sent you at the time, but I sent you in the link was I show you how amplifiers works. An amplifier used Lorentz force, magnetic force, to actually move and vibrate. And this, there's a magnet inside that. And this vibration actually punch the air you know that sound is just punching air. It's changing in pressure, right? So if you want to do the note A, A, A the note La, you just need to punch the air 40, 140 times a second. This is La. La. That's what you do, okay? So at this vibration, this Lorentz force actually produces. So we want to know what is the magnetic field on top of the stage. Is it too much? Is it going to interrupt the sound? on the stage, so that's what we're going to check. So in order to find it, we know the symmetry and we want to use it. So we have a new law and this law is really easy because this law was, this is dimension, dimension. This law was 3D. It was hard, right? And this law going to be 2D. It's going to be simpler. So instead of area, I want us to take not an area, just lines, small pieces of line, okay? Here it is. I brought a rope. So this is L, like we had A. This is A, uh, this is L. And this is, with the arrow, small arrow, this is BL. Perfect, good. Here we're going to write, not the electric field, but the magnetic field, right? Between them, they're going to be a dot product. Great. And the integral, it's not going to be two-dimensional integral, right? It's going to be what? One-dimensional. One Great. And this shape, this was a what area? A close area. So how I take this and close it? That's all. Whatever shape that you want, it could be square, it could be this triangle, it could be perfect circle, it could be going that way, I don't care, okay? But it needs to be only close, let's do, I love to do it hard, okay? Whatever shape that you want, 
Okay, heart is a perfect shape for that. Got it? But it must be closed. So let's find that in our case. Got it? Let's find it. Okay, so I'm going to this side of the board. Okay. So we already know something about the symmetry. We know that if this is the stage, we know that above the x-axis, all the magnets going that direction and going at that direction, right? This is the magnetic field direction, we know that. And right now I need to choose some shape, right? Like we did in Gauss. What we did with Gauss if we had squares, we use the shape of Squares, the same. I'm going to use the symmetry. 99% of the time it's going to work. Okay? Here I have rectangular. What shape should I use? Rectangular. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do just that. This is my L. Okay? And which direction? Whatever I like. Okay? Good. So, and don't forget that we have here all the J's, right? We have J's, many J's. Perfect, okay. So we want to find this integral, which we said it's looking like this, B, the L, right? And remember that we had in Gauss faces. Right now it's an easier question. Instead of faces, we have edges, right? We have this line, this line, and this line. Let's give them name A, B, C, D. So this is my shape. And what I can do to my integral? Split it. Instead of faces like we had in Gauss, I can open it to the integral, which is A, B, B dot DL, and the integral B, B, C, right? Sorry, A, B, D. Sorry, right? A, B, B, D, D, C, D, C. And the last one is, and what you see, A at the end, A at the beginning, which means my integral was close. close. It's okay. I did it right. Don't forget that all of them are vectors and because of the symmetry of the problem I'm gonna say that the magnitude of this magnetic field equal to the magnitude of this magnetic field right but I want you to note something why we actually choose this shape what we want to do to this dot want to kill it right we want to kill the dot or the integral itself right so what is the integral in that direction this is B, right? And we didn't choose the L, right? So I'm going to choose the L in that direction. This is my DL. DL is just a small line, right? Okay? So in this place, what is the direction between the magnetic field and DL? Yes, 180 degrees. So this one is actually B, right? Minus. This is the direction I choose. Um, ah, sorry, 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 sorry. I choose the opposite way. Sorry for that. Okay? I choose the opposite way. This way. Sorry about it. In my draw I did something else, but that's what I meant. Okay, so what is the direction between them? Zero, right? So here the cosines of the dot product is actually one. So this is B multiplied by DL. What is the direction of DL? This is BX, right? B at that location. DL is what? Is DX at the X direction, right? Good. What's going to happen at BD? Uh, sorry, at AC. What do you have at AC? Exactly. 90 degrees. As we had at Gauss. Who you will care about? B dot DL. DL going that way and the magnetic field said I'm going that way. So they have 90 degrees, so this integral dying out. Which another integral going to die out? C. This one, CD. They're going to cancel. 
Right? No. Ah, sorry. No, no. BD. Sorry. BD. BD and CA. Right? And this is CD alive. CD. Where is CD? This is CD. Okay. It's good. You are awake. Good sign. Okay? So this was easy. This was a good choice. Because here, what the direction of B? Minus X, right? And what direction of DL? Minus X. Minus DX, right? So this ends up to be plus, okay? We didn't say what is the length of each one of them. So I'm going to say that this size is length of L. I can do that, right? L. So this integral is actually B multiplied by L. And this integral is actually B multiply by L, we had here minus and minus, it's become plus. So this whole side equal to what? 2BL, right? This is this, right? And this is only half of the equation. This is the hard side of the equation. And we kill it. Let's go back to the board, to the drawing board. Here, back to here. What we had inside this volume this was a 2D, I agree. I'm taking 2D and I capture a volume. Inside this volume, what do we have? Gauss's law said, compare what? Sum of the charge inside, right? So here we had actually Q in A divided by epsilon node, right? And this is equal to what? If you want to write it more explicitly, we can write it's equal to the rho dv divided by epsilon, right? What we have in magnetism, which constant? We have a new constant, huh? We have mu. This is our new constant. But I agree with you. In electric field, we will care only about charge. But right now in magnetic, we are not caring about charge. We're caring about charge that actually moves, right? What is charge that moving? Current. So this equal to I, pen. Pen from the word penetrate, okay? What do I mean? When I take this area, this crazy area, okay? This is the area. Let's do it smaller so it's gonna be easier for me to demonstrate. This is the area, this circle. And I'm gonna put it in water with soap. What am I gonna have here in the middle? A bubble. This bubble is the area of the loop. And now I care about only the currents that are going to actually poke this bubble. You see this heart? This is I penetrate. Okay? That's the one I care about. Okay? And could be many currents. One that way, one that way, one that way. I don't care. Only about the one that's inside. What is the more mature way to write current? We talked about that? J. J, exactly, the current density. Okay, so let me do here some constructions. So a more mature way would be to write J vector dot dA, right? You see, I told you this is a 2D problem and this is a 3D problem. So all the people that have some fear about Gauss's law Guys, you're going to love Ampere, okay? Ampere is going to be much easier and going to give you insights about Gauss's law, okay? This is clear? Let's do it more nice, arranged. Okay, let's find this side of the equation. I'm going to that board, here. So, so who is this thing? So we have mu, which is our constant, right? So nothing special there. So we have mu. Right? Multiply by the current that pocket. And in this question, we have it as a j, right? So we need to write this term, j vector dot dA. Who is the dA? What dA do we have in this? The area of the... This is your bubble. All this thing. Come on with me. This is your bubble. Who are the, you know, the not nice currents that actually poke this area? This. 
He is one, he is the one, he is the one, he is the one. So we need to have a small dimension of area. Like this. You see it? This is small dA, which been interrupt by this current. So this dA, what is its magnitude? If this is x, this is z, is actually dx dz, right? Sorry, not dz. This is... Huh? Yes, it's z, sorry. dz. Right? And in what direction? If you choose this thing, right, this is the direction of your loop, you already chose the direction of your dA. dA is that direction, in that direction, which is, in our case, the y direction, right? The y direction. Perfect. What is j? We solve it, right? We, it's a given. Didn't solve it. It was given in the question to be j, not z squared. In what direction? Why? So these two cancel out because of the dot product, right? And right now we're going to be more sophisticated and don't going to write one integral but two because I have two variables for the integral. Some people do here double integral. I hate it. Why do it? It's wrong. You have here one thing that you're running on, right? DA, you sum small DAs, right? You should write double integrals and you have two things that you run on, right? So perfect. So what is dx that we are care about? This one, uh, sorry, we are care about from here to here, right? We don't care about this one, right? We only care the one that poke, penetrate our thing, right? So this is running from 0 to L, because we said this is 0, this is L, right? And, uh, okay, good. And I'm sorry about the drawing, okay? It should be at the positive direction, all the, this thing, okay? So it's 0 till L, okay? Huh? This one? You mean Z? Ah, okay. Yes, 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 we can do that. Yeah. 0 L, sorry for that. And what is the Z that we care about? Here, there's, I don't, here I actually would care if there was something that poked it, right? But there isn't. There is only between this thing that they told us it's thickness D. So this is D over 2 minus plus D over 2. Clear? This is exactly like the submarine question, right? Remember when we had Gauss's law in the past? So this is exactly the submarine question, but 2D instead of 3D, okay? And you're also more experienced right now. So this is a constant sayonara, okay? No dependence on x. L can go also out. Z integral, perfect. Z to the third divided by 3. Z to the third divided by 3 in the dimension d over 2, d over 2, but this is in minus, and this ends up to be m mu 0, L, J, uh, sorry, mu 0, J, d to the third divided by 24 multiplied by 2L. I do the, did it on purpose. Why? Because that equal to what? To the other side, which is b multiplied by 2l. What's happened to my imaginary loop 2l? You see it? It get cancelled. It was my free choice to decide how wide I want this frame to be, but I'm gonna get the same result each time. So, cameraman, I'm here. So we find out that b outside of the stage, right, because we drew from the outside, is equal to what? to mu j this constant, the thickness of the stage to the third, divided by 24. So if this is too much of magnetic field, so what uh, the engineers can do about it, they can say, dude, let's use less current, okay? More significant, let's use a smaller stage, okay? Because this is d to the third, right? That's what they can do. Mu, it's a more complicated idea, it's about the material. Okay? 
That's the idea. Like we had in capacitors, we had epsilon. We talk about which material we inside. So this is mu. Okay, perfect. We found that one. But this is not the magnetic field in all space. We are missing some of it. Which one? Inside, exactly, but the symmetry telling us the same thing. The one above the x-axis is going to be that direction. I'm going to that board. I'm going to change my loop, right? Let me do the drawing right now, how it should be done, okay? So this is the stage, right? This is going to be the x-axis, this is going to be the z-axis. So x, y, the y in that direction. Right, so the current is actually going inside. And I'm gonna choose right now, smaller frame. Which frame I'm gonna choose? This one, because I know the symmetry. I know that the magnetic field in these parts, in these parts going at that direction, and in these parts going that direction. Yes, on the opposite one, I think. Above the stage, it's to the positive, below it, it's to the negative, right? I know direction. I know that here, I'm going to have zero. So these two are going to cancel out if I'm going to do A, B, C, D, right? Sorry, A, B, C, D, right? A, B, C, A, D going to cancel out. B, D, A, C canceling out, right? This is not canceling. DC and AB staying alive. In both of them, the direction of DL and the direction of B are the same. So they end up to be B multiplied by L, B multiplied by L, end up with 2BL. What actually changed for me? The other side. The other side is, tell me, tell me what is the current inside. DA did not change, it's still that creature. J function did not change. We're still in the stage. It's did that creature. Cameraman, you with me? Yes? Okay. So the A didn't change. J didn't change. But the integrals change. We're still running from 0 to L at X. But at Z, we're going to miss some of them. This axis right now outside of the frame, outside of the picture, they're not going to be counted. So I need to understand what is this length, right? This length is, I will call it here. Um, ah, okay, we can do a general. Minus Z plus Z, right? I'm gonna run in this term. So I'm gonna do the integral. It's the same integral, but what change? This change. What is the Z that I want to look at? And I'm gonna end up with with mu zero j over three z to the third multiplied by two l. Compare this and this, two l died out and I found the magnetic field inside the stage. All good? We understand that. And now I want to ask you another question, okay? Can you start the video and start, uh, do a new video?